G'day, Paul Brennan from the Bring Our Birds Home campaign. It's Thursday morning, March 30th. Time for another video update. Things are getting interesting. We're getting to the business end. The tempo is rising. The drama and intrigue increasing. It really feels like we have a treasure hunt on our hands and we're going all the way. So, late yesterday afternoon, Wednesday, I posted an emergency video update telling you about an email I just received at that time from Joanna Diesling, who's at MFAT's America's desk telling us that New Zealand Embassy staff in Brazil had been in contact with Infra Aero, the company that owns Manaus International Airport. They wanted to know about the status of, on our behalf, of ZKNZC, the DC-8 airframe XE New Zealand that we want to bring home eventually. Now, the airport company Infra Aero told our embassy staff that two of the four derelict DC-8 airframes that have been at the airfield for many years were recently auctioned and dismantled and removed to make way for some airport development. They couldn't confirm, however, whether the two remaining airframes included NZC. So, we've gone on to Google Earth and we've found an image dated 2017 showing clearly, you can see it behind me and I'll put it up here so you can have a better look at it, showing clearly the NZC airframe still on the property. So that gives us hope. But if NZC is one of the two that have been auctioned and dismantled and removed, that must have happened only recently, if you can believe the date stamp on this Google Earth image, which gives us hope as well. Either way, the trail is not cold. So what I've done this morning is I've sent an email through to Pedro at the Brazilian Embassy in Wellington, who I've been talking with over the time, informing him of the content of the email received from MFAT, and suggesting to him that if the Brazilian Embassy in Wellington can help expedite our understanding of the status of NZC at this point of our campaign, that would be so useful. And also that if it is one of the airframes that have been auctioned and dismantled, that we somehow identify the owners so we can strike up a dialogue with them. And I've sent an email through to one of the members of the Manaus Spotters Group, a photographer by the name of Frederico. He's posted many pictures of this DC-8 airframe at Manaus over the years and mentioned in some of his posts that it's an ex-Air New Zealand plane, so he knows about that. And judging by his more recent photos, he's still in the area. So maybe we'll hear back from him in the not-too-distant future. He can uh, add to the picture and maybe even supply an image, who knows. So what I'm trying to say is uh, it doesn't matter which way, the trail is still warm and uh, whatever opportunity we have we will pursue and hopefully we'll have that information very soon and as soon as we get it I'll bring it to you. Now as far as the 737 ZK NAD is concerned which is in a boneyard on an airfield in North Carolina, we've tried over the months to contact the owners of the boneyard, we've got as far as the receptionist and a personal assistant but not much further than that and that includes phone calls from a friend of mine in America through to this uh, company. What I've done today is I've contacted the airport company, the company that owns the airport, informed them of the Bring Our Birds Home campaign, what we're trying to do and why we are interested in that airframe, being the first airliner in New Zealand history to uh, carry out a commercial domestic jet service. And we've asked them if they could put us in touch with the owners of that airframe and help us start a dialogue. That would be fantastic. Now, it's late afternoon time in North Carolina, our time Thursday morning, so I don't expect to hear back from them today. But maybe in the next day or so, we'll get a reply and we'll know more about that. We have very recent photos of that airframe at that airfield, so we're pretty well 100% confident that airframe is still intact and hasn't gone anywhere. Now, as far as the others are concerned, just to update you, of course, we had that image through about a week ago uh, from Havana, Cuba, showing clearly that uh, the XN New Zealand DC-10 ZK NZS is intact and still in existence. We know that the X uh, Teal Electra, TEB, is still 100% intact because it's used as a uh, water bomber in Canada, it's still airworthy. The oldest of the five, still airworthy, so that's 100%. And we're about 95% sure that the first 747 delivered to Air New Zealand NZV is intact at Domodedovo Airport in Moscow, Russia. We had someone contact us about a week or so ago informing us that they had a friend who was a BA captain. She flew into that airport regularly and he would ask her to take a snap of the plane or to determine whether it's there or not 
and if it's there, take a snap of the plane. Uh, she's come back and said she won't be going in there until May, which is a bit far away for us, but she's asked colleagues who may be going in there earlier to look out for it and maybe get a picture of it. And we've also contacted via Instagram a few of the local spotters and photographers uh, telling them that we need to find out whether this aircraft is there 100%. So we should know about that very soon. So that's where everything is. It's an interesting campaign. The dream scenario is to get all five, but even if we get one, two, three or four, that's good for me because these are our birds. They are special because they were made for us. If we didn't order them, they wouldn't have come into existence. That's why they are ultimately our birds and that's why we want to bring them home. So watch for more video updates. Thank you very much for your support and your comments and uh, keep on coming back and hopefully we'll be able to tell you more as we get ready to launch publicity to drive this to a new level approaching our planned crowdfunding phase one set down for the month of May.